Okay, so in this video, what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at how we can model some low poly objects. And those objects are gonna be a car, a bus, and a tree. So um, definitely a few different types of objects uh, that hopefully after seeing how we can make these will allow you to make even more uh, low poly objects. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, before diving into Cinema 4D, if you just do a quick Google of low poly cars, you'll see that you get a variety of different kind of looks. Anything from something that does have a little bit of detail to it, um, has some stylization, um, you know, we got some nice lights, some grills, some wheels, uh, to even something like this that I would say takes this a, a bit further with um, even more details on the, the wheels and grill, um, to something like this that is actually quite simple. And this is more along the lines of what we're gonna be making, but know that there are a lot of different approaches to making a low poly car and they can look very different, right? This one has, you know, um, a wheel in it and some seats, which you really don't see in a lot of these others, all right? So just keep that in mind. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. What we're gonna do is start by making a cube and just kind of, trying to get the proportions to what we want. Now in a perfect world, you would do a sketch, find an image, bring it in here and put it on a reference plane. Um, I'm just gonna kind of wing it though and see what we end up with. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. So that's looking pretty good, I think, for the base shape of the car. Because it's gonna be so simple, we can change these proportions pretty easily as we go. But I'm gonna now make this editable and Go into loop path cut to add my loops for on the top part here, which I will now extrude. Okay. And then come into a side view here. Oops. Something like this. Come in here to rectangle selection and kind of scale these out to start getting the angle. Once again, just kind of starting to work with the proportions here to get what I want. So um, I may want this to come out a bit more. Same with that. Maybe we pull this up a bit, out a bit more, and then perhaps bring that up just a bit as well. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, um, I am gonna go into my loop path and add two more cuts here. Now these aren't straight, but we'll go ahead and make them straight here. So that's the most important thing. And with those is the, the spacing isn't very important yet. I'm gonna select them, open up my attribute manager and find the one axis I want to zero them out on. And that is the X. So I'll just come over here and zero that. I could also just scale them down um, until you know they're straight. Assuming I don't select any vertices I don't want. So something like this can work as well, but it can be hard to know exactly when you get it to zero. And that's why just coming in here, typing it in can work as well. So place those oops, close together. Now I can slide them kind of the middle to separate the front or the front from the back. We can keep going. And honestly, I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and add our windows. So let's hold down shift to select multiple polygons here. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to, this is looking a little bit wide. So let's just maybe make it a bit narrower. And then also um, just kind of scale the top in just a touch as well. There we go. Back to polygon selection. We have all our windows selected. And when I go to inset now, I can just uncheck preserve groups. And that will make sure that these apart if i don't uncheck preserve groups notice how they stick together whereas if i do uncheck it they now separate so i can do something like that go ahead and extrude them in a little bit and there we go that's looking pretty good i'm going to add my wheels i'm going to start by creating some cylinders and these are, first cylinders are just going to be for the wheel wells right so that's looking pretty good size wise really should be using my symmetry tools to help me with this but we're not or at least i'm not i would definitely recommend doing it i do have a video about symmetry tools so maybe that looks pretty good 
and then pull this one back for the rear wheel. Take both of these, duplicate them. I'm going to group them together. That way I can put them into a bool. Um, bools are probably the last place I would, uh, or low poly modeling is still a place I would use bools for more, for situations like this, normally I would use the volume builder if I wanted something that has higher detail. But um, for low poly, low detail, bool is the way to go. It typically gives us some uglier geometry, though it's kind of hidden um, because high quality is turned on. So that's, you know, really kind of, you know, what we're working with there. Right. Now to actually make the wheels, I can just duplicate those cylinders that I used in the bool, then make them a bit smaller. Now, when I try to scale these, it probably won't work because it's treating this as a single object. However, if I go into my scale tool and turn on per object transform, you can see uh, now when I scale, it scales them individually. So I can scale them down a little bit. And yeah, honestly, I think that looks pretty good. I may want all of these to go up just a bit. So um, I'll select the wheels, select that null. Then that way, when I move them up, you can see it kind of goes together and I can figure out where I want these to be. So we want the middle point to be, you know, something like that. All right. And maybe I feel like that's weird. Something. Oh, when I scaled those in, I think I got those too. So I can go to a top view and fix that. This point needs to go to there. And what I can do is select this point, find its Z value, copy it in my attribute manager, or coordinate manager, I should say, and then paste it into that one. Oops. Select that one, paste the Z. There we go. Do the same thing with this one. Select its Z value, copy it, paste it. All right. So it's looking good. Right. I'm trying to figure out if I want to angle this edge at all. You know, whether it's down. No, I don't like that. Up, maybe. No. Okay. In. I actually don't mind that, but we'll just kind of leave it as is. And we're going to finish up here with a couple of the smaller details. So that will be adding some detail to the wheels, adding a bumper, a tailpipe, and some light. So for the wheels, I'm going to get rid of the height segments. Reduce those to one. I actually don't want these as thick either. Let's turn off this um, work plane because it's getting in my way. Now, we really don't see the height there, but it can be something we want to adjust. And then maybe go into a top view, which is F2 on your keyboard. Just kind of pull these out. All right. That looks good. That looks good. That's kind of. Interesting. All right. Well, we're only seeing this side. I'm going to select my cylinders now. I will need to make them editable so I can um, do some more to them. Although, actually, before I make them editable, I'm going to go into the caps and add a couple of cap segments. So it's maybe something like that. Now I'll make them editable. Make sure I'm in polygon mode and I'm going to select just the middle triangles. That way I can very easily grow my selection out. So that is U and then Y to grow a selection. And from there, we'll extrude this in. And I'm actually going to shrink that selection back down and then bevel this a little bit. Once again, just a little bit more detail. There we go. Awesome. Now, another part of working low poly is to get rid of long tags. So on my wheels here, I'm going to want to get rid of my fong tags so that way we see the hard edged um, surface. Um, and honestly, you know, a big part of uh, low poly modeling, because I want to get rid of the fong tag on here too, is getting rid of the fong tag and reducing polygons. So you could, you know, throw a higher polygon object into a remesh and lower the polygon counter, maybe even the polygon reduction, and, you know, crank that way down, make sure it doesn't have a fong tag. And who knows, you might end up with some interesting results. Okay. What we're going to do now is create a bumper. So I'll start with a cube way too big. So I will take this guy and shrink it down and shrink it down. 
on the Y. Next comes the X. Still ending up with kind of a, a rectangle or a cube shape on the Y and X. That looks pretty good. Just kind of sticking it out like that. That looks good. I'm actually going to duplicate this to the back as well. We have a back bumper. All right. And if we wanted to maybe get this to wrap around, uh, we can make this editable. Go into a polygon selection. Select both sides. Extrude. Select these new polygons. And we'll be extruding these one more time. So just to give us a little bit of a wraparound bumper. You know, should those go all the way back? No, definitely not. Cool. That's looking good. Now it's time for the lights. And since we're only going to see the front of this car, or at least for right now, I'm going to just create front lights. You could do something similar for the back lights. I'll just start with a cylinder and, you know, get smaller. Stick it to the front of the car. Orbit so I know exactly where I'm placing this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Position wise, depth wise still leaves a lot to be desired. Something like that. Pretty good. Getting there. I like that. To make it editable. Oops. Could have come in here and reduced the height segments before I made it editable. Now I can do that again. And select the uh, front polygons here, inset them. Oops. Make sure I check preserve groups again, inset. And just bevel these a little bit forward. There we go. Once again, just looking for a little bit of detail. Duplicate this one, the other side. Make one in here. Actually, this will probably come out a bit more. This is where having the lines on can help just for positioning purposes. Also, symmetry would help here a lot as well. Just duplicate those to maybe, yeah, do something like this. And there we go. That's pretty much it. The last thing we'll add is a little bit of a tailpipe here. Quick cylinder. Rotate it. Narrower. We're going to reduce the height segments like we've done previously. And then just kind of scale this down. Have it stick out of our bumper a little bit. So something, yeah, just like that. Now, in the grand scheme of things, I should come in here and name all this stuff, and I will later on. But to keep this video going, what I'm going to do is just select everything, hit Alt-G to group it, and name it R. With that done, I'm going to hide it and get ready to model the bus. So I'm going to look up an image for a bus now. Okay. And honestly, right, like, you know, if this is what we're going for. Oh, shoot, it's free. We could absolutely download it, but what fun is that? Um, so let's see. Um, I'll keep that up as I'm modeling this. This one is, is kind of interesting as well, depending on the type of bus uh, we're going for here. Even this one, still low poly. And so, like I said, low poly doesn't necessarily mean no detail, it just means simplified detail. And there's um, a real artistry to knowing what detail to keep, what detail to get rid of. Uh, I really like how they've added some detail to the bumper here. Um, they even have windshield wipers, side mirrors, a little bit more detail in the hub uh, hubcaps or wheels, um, the sign up here. So this one uh, I really, really like. And so I'm going to keep that one up actually, um, though I don't know if we'll model that in exact bus. That'll be kind of the one um, I use. And so I'm going to start with a cube. Again, extend it. And honestly, not all that different than starting with the car, right? Um, the cube, um, we're going to use a bool to create, to create the wheel wells again. Um, let's go ahead and make this editable because I want to do the top of the bus. So I will extrude this and then scale it in to kind of create that shape. Maybe something like that. Actually, I take it back. So I'm going to extrude this one more time. And that will be the one that I pull in. All right. And then maybe take that whole section. Oops. 
just pull it down a touch. All right, so that looks good. I may want to get rid of that edge right there. So I will select it and then hit dissolve. Okay, dissolve. Right. Um, let's cut out the wheels. You know, it's all about getting the proportions down in the beginning. So that's what I'm focused on. And I learned my lesson last time. Let's kind of get these set. So that looks pretty good. And maybe that looks pretty good. Duplicate these over. The other side. Again, can switch to my, um, say, a top view to help me position these, but it looks like I did a pretty good job. And group them because with the bool, it only works with two objects. Though one of those two objects, or actually, I suppose you could do it both ways, although I haven't tried that, would be um, you know, two nulls. So a null counts as one of the objects, even though you can have multiple objects inside and you need to make sure to have the order correct. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. Once again, to get my wheels, um, shoot, why don't we just do, hit the whole null, all this wheels. It does help to stay organized as you go, right? So take these, get them narrower. We obviously don't want them sticking out the side. So there we go. That would explain it. Something like that. Something like this. Still need to make them have a smaller radius. Awesome. So that's looking pretty good. Once again, I'm going to get rid of the Fong tag. All right. Doesn't do a whole lot for me yet. Um, let's see. Really, a big part of this bus is going to be um, the windows. So why don't we get started on those? And I'll just do a loop path cut all the way around. And for the middle windows, why don't we just do something like that? And I do like this kind of technique of only adding two cuts um, and then selecting those cuts. So this is not necessarily the most efficient way. And then scaling them to get them closer together or further apart. Um, that's what I want there for our front windows. Um, I'm not going to inset them yet because ideally I'd like to be, do all the inset and extruding, extruding at the same time. This may also be a situation where um, I use my loop path cut tool, but restrict it to um, my selection here. So that way I only get these cuts on those two selected polygons. Um, and so let's see, we can just add one. This is where I'll just multiply these to get a decent amount of windows. Um, Oops. There we go. I like that. Now, really, one side should have a door. So, you know, we should worry about that. Um, let's see. So, we'll leave that as the door. The rest of these we can now select. I'm going to select these as well. Should be able to do all of them at once. And I'm going to do an inset. Now, because these are connected, if I don't do anything, they will stay together like that, which I don't want. So what I need to do is uncheck preserve groups and that should break them up. So I can do something like that, extrude these back and there are my windows. Got to be careful that we don't cross those over. Looks like we just made it. Okay. For the door, it's a little bit tricky. Um, it's only that side. Loop path cut is not quite going to work because they're not even and it's not continuous loop. So um, I can go to plane cut, make sure I choose that, and then figure out what plane I want. So it's not this one, it's not XY. Uh, let's just go through. Hey, we got it. So maybe something like that for the door. Now, what I'm going to do with the door, I don't exactly know. Why don't we just Inset it, step, turn preserve groups back on, extrude that back, and then maybe just extrude like this as a window. So inset and extrude that back. Great. We're starting to get somewhere. 
And really now it's just about those smaller details. And um, I probably won't go through all of the, the smaller details because if you look at this bus, um, there are a lot from the different lights to the bumper, to the, the windshield wipers, to the mirrors, to the reflectors on the side, even the, I don't know what the wheel wells are there. We got a vent. So there's a lot of things going on here. Um, so we'll just do a couple of, of quick ones. Um, let's start with the bumper, since I do think that is important. We can just get this going. That's looking, yeah, I mean, let's be honest, not great. And one thing that can help make low poly things look a little bit better as we're working on them in our perspective view is to turn on screen space ambient occlusion. Is that's gonna give us just a little bit of ambient occlusion here and just allow us to, to see what, you know, our objects actually um, can look like because ambient occlusion is a nice technique as well when working with low polygon to make things just look a little bit better, get some extra shadows and contrast, things like that. So bumper there looks pretty good. Um, so I like that. We can add some lights. I can just actually work with, oops, duplicate that cube here. Don't want it quite that large. Maybe something like that. And just for a little bit of extra detail, we can inset it. And I really want to do a bevel though. I don't like the bevel. I almost prefer to just do it myself since it's really just uh, a scaled down extrude. So that looks okay. Want to get rid of the fong tag. And duplicate this out. There we go. And let's see what else. I guess we'll do the mirrors and then the wheels and we'll we'll call it because really the sign stuff that could and we can do that pretty easily as well, I think. Um where's our main cube? So just do an inset, do a little bit larger one this time. Move that back. That looks good. We're starting to get something that looks not terrible. Always a big fan of that. Um, so yeah, the mirrors. Okay, what do we got mirror wise? So it looks like two different mirrors. Great. That's fun. Can't just be the same. We're I'm gonna just use the same mirror. Uh, I'm gonna start with a tourist, actually a tube, since that's a little bit lower polygon, not quite as round. I'm gonna want this to be pretty thin and then height wise, kind of small. And I'm gonna slice this. All right, so something like really just need zero to ninety. That's what I'll do. Okay, and if there's any like bus drivers, don't get mad at me for you know how inaccurate all of this stuff. Bus drivers, designers, anybody who's familiar with buses, really. All right, so just scaling this down. Because really, it's just that corner I care about. Everything else, I could extrude this further this way, that further, um, that way. So. Um, let's see how we want to do this. Still not sure I'm doing this quite as I, quite the way I want. So, okay, can do that, make it editable, extrude that M polygon, like I said. Um, this isn't quite low polygon, so let's actually reduce the number of rotation segments there. Perfect. Much more low poly-like. Don't like what I'm seeing on the end there, but so be it. Um, I it's because I didn't get rid of those height segments. Now we can do this. Perfect. So still don't like those triangles, but I'll live with them. So extrude that out. And take a cube. Just kind of fit it as our mirror. So really thin, narrow. Oops. That's why you want to orbit a lot so you can actually tell where things are and not just guess because chances are you will be wrong. So, okay, we'll call that one mirror. <laughs> it's a bit, bit ridiculous, still way too big. Let's just make it a bit smaller here. I feel like these would be taken off pretty quickly. If you're driving around a city, but yeah, that I don't even know how that, that would actually work. Is a mirror, but uh, 
We're going to pretend like that's good. Move it here. And this is another great place to use symmetry, but I'm not going to. Then I'm just going to group everything and then set the Z scale to negative one. And there we go. I actually don't know if it's going to come through in the recording, but my uh, blue light filter, I think, just kicked on. So I'll be very curious to see if anybody else notices that or if it's just a monitor thing. So it's set up in Windows, but who knows? So, okay, there's our bus just about done. Last thing I'm going to do is add some detail to our wheels here um, by reducing the height segments and adding a couple of cap segments, just very similar to what we did on the last one. Um, Come back in here, just grab the middle. Another little useful tip is just to grab all those triangles at once as opposed to like trying to go all the way around and then growing the selection by hitting U, Y. So can extrude these and scale them down. And once again, if this happens, um, it should be the per object transform, but I don't know why that isn't working. So maybe we'll just do the good old bevel and just use that to kind of do what we want there. Perfect. Okay. And here's our bus. Now let's talk about the last thing I want to actually model, and that is uh, some trees. I'm going to group my bus together. Come here, bus. I like the bus a lot better than a car. Like the car. Uh, now for trees, it's a similar type of thing. Okay, as we've been talking about, I apologize for all the caps, um, but a lot of different types of trees, a lot of different ways to approach modeling low polygon trees, whether you want to do tron or cylinder cones, um, blobs, cubes, you know, you name it. All right. Lots of different ways to approach these. But what I'm going to try and do is come up with, I mean, I know how I'm going to do it, but a procedural way to do this. Uh, and so what that means is we're going to have a simplified trunk and simplified top. Honestly, we're going to probably do something like that. So let's see how we can do that. I'm going to start with the trunk here and it's going to be a cylinder. Make sure I check the segments. Definitely don't want our fong tag. So let's see height segments. I actually do want them for once. All right. And down here, make it editable and flare out the bottom however I want. So maybe something like that, maybe a little bit there. And honestly, this would be one of the things that we're probably better off doing a little bit on our own to make them unique. So rather than try and do everything procedural, I might want to model one or two of these. So for instance, if that's one, I could come here and maybe just move each of these just a little bit as well, just to give me something that's a little bit different. I mean, I really should be doing that to the other one as well. I and mean, don't forget about, you know, all the other directions, but just something to make it look a little bit different. So we'll actually roll with the second one. Okay. Back to the origin it goes. Now for the, the top part, um, I'm going to use a sphere. Okay. So sphere. Right. But instead of a red regular sphere, I'm going to use a hexagon or a hexahedron because they're all six sided. And that's going to make it much easier to do this next thing, which is um, to apply. And you can actually do this a couple of different ways either a displacer um, deformer. Okay. I'm not sure why I'm not able to find it. There it is. Or what I like to use is a random effector. And you may be going random effector. Wait a second. How can you use that as a deformer? Well, make it a child, just like you would. Go to the deformer section and switch it to point. And there you go. So obviously, that's a bit too much. So um, I'm going to zero these out. Really, it's just the Z that matters. That's going to be pushing and pulling this on our normals. So that's how we can get our tree. Now, we also want to make sure we delete the fong tag there. And if we turn off our lines, there you have it, our low poly tree. We could adjust the number of segments. We want simpler or even more complex. We can get different 
crease here, and we could even apply one to our trunk. Okay, probably don't want quite as high a value. Even that can just give us a little bit more difference. And what I would do is then come here and kind of duplicate a couple of these out and maybe modify the trunk, like I said, maybe even for the sphere um, before we even get to that point, uh, make it editable and apply, say, an FFD to it. Although I guess you didn't have to, you don't have to make it editable to do this, but just as a way to kind of change the shape a little bit before we even do a whole lot, right? So maybe something like that, and then add the random to it. And what you can do in the random or wherever you have a random effector is in the effector tab, adjust the seed. And that will completely randomize the pattern. And so I could do the same thing to my trunk. So I would come through here, make a few different trees, right? Actually, maybe we'll do one more. Let's just group this and call this three. Would help if I turned off caps lock, I suppose. Three, two. This is, let's see, group objects, three, one. You will be tree three. And we could even do something a little bit, you know, different here where um, we use multiple spheres, right? Think I'm going back to the, that image I had previously. Some of these have multiple you know shapes here and, and what we could do if we wanted to get really crazy which i mean i don't but here we are so maybe i do something like this and oops i pull one of these out scale it down a little and then another one maybe over here scale down even more right well this could work you know the polygons being the same size, I think would be a nice touch. So what I can do with those spheres is put them all into a volume builder. This is really just kind of another technique for making things low poly, but volume builder, um, lower, actually I don't really need to lower the voxel size, but then to put it in a volume measure. Okay, right. I mean, honestly, that looks pretty good for something a little bit more high polygon, at least in terms of how natural it is. Uh, but then put all of that into a remesher. And so, you know, one way to make things low poly is just to reduce the polygon count on them, whether it's using the remesher, like I said, or polygon reduction. Um, so I can just come here and say maybe 1% and see what we get. Okay, well, so that's low poly, but uh, that's a bit too low poly. And there's still a fong tag somewhere in there. So I can... Get rid of that. I think it's calculating again, and it is. And just kind of keep going from here, right? So this one could be, why don't we try 5%? There we go. So a little bit different look, but honestly, I kind of like that one the best, you know? So lots of different ways to approach making things um, low poly wise, other uh, like modeling it, like we did with the bus and the car. Even when it comes to something like a tree, there are a couple of different ways. Um, and even this way with the volume is still pretty procedural. You know, I can come back at any time and change the seed for these to change this up. And the same thing with the trunk, although that's not in the, the volume thing. Go through and do that. So uh, there you have it. And that will do it for this video. I know it was a long one, but hopefully you found it useful. Uh, stay tuned as um, I'll do another video um, that kind of goes along using these objects to create a low polygon scene. So that'll do it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions and take care.